I couldn't even believe it. As I was walking through the large pasture, I suddenly looked out and in the distance, around all of my cows, I saw a tiny little red and brown lump wiggling on the ground. As I walked closer, I became pretty certain that yes, there was in fact a new calf that had been born overnight. Which is incredibly surprising because my bull has been completely separate from my cows ever since he arrived at my farm back in February. I stand here before me in a never ending sense of external dread and silence in my solitude here up on the pasture. Ooh yeah. Isolation, my only contender in this ring of life, has been an underlying adversary. Ooh, yeah, I've been feeling the madness, the madness of being alone, alone from my herd, just a bull without a herd, like a planet devoid of life, spinning through the cosmos, yearning for the touch of another celestial being, but I hold out hope, hope that someday I'll be rejoined with the bovine ladies, it is a loneliness, a solitude, that only a creature of such vast landscapes can comprehend, oh yeah. Good morning, large white farm dogs. How are you guys? Come on out. Say hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Abby, you're looking a little ragged, but I'm gonna have to brush you out again today. I know. All right, come on, guys. Let's go. So we've got kind of a big day here on the farm today because today on the farm, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna finally introduce our teenage bull, macho man, Randy Savage, to our fold of Scottish Highland ladies. I think that this is a moment that we have all been waiting for. Let loose the goose. And I'm pretty excited to show you. <laughs> Let's turn the entire fence off here this morning. Morning, macho man. How you doing, buddy? You got a big day ahead of you today. Are you ready for this? Yeah, you're gonna be getting all the ladies. Finally, you've been waiting for so long. Now in terms of how I'm gonna pull this one off, you know, he's got quite a distance to go. I've actually been keeping him here on the upper pasture on the far north side, but the ladies right now are pretty much on the far south, I guess southwest side of the pasture. And if I take out my handy dandy measurement tool, it looks like we're gonna have to move him about 1100 feet. You know, not a crazy distance, but also, a little far. You know, it's funny, I was actually texting with Janet, who, uh, you know, Janet and Ray, they're the people who sold me Randy, and she was giving me some suggestions for introduction. When I was texting with her last night, I had kind of said, oh, I think I'm just gonna run like some poly wire and make an alleyway, but I'm realizing it's probably almost too far. She cautioned me about using the halter when he first sees the ladies, because he might charge, but I do think I'm going to use the combination of the halter plus the brush to walk him most of the distance. But then when I do get close, I probably will let go of of this because I don't want to get my arm ripped off or create any problems and so I'm going to be very very careful with this one. You know Macho Man has been an extremely gentle and sociable bull and so I feel like I've been very lucky with that regard in terms of training him and getting him used to me and getting him working here on the farm but I also know I can't take any of that for granted and I still need to be exceptionally careful whenever I'm working with all of my cattle but particularly when I'm working with my bull but he is a very good bull. That is for gosh darn sure. All right, man, let's get this on you. I feel like everybody and their mother has sent me this one news clipping story. It's a really sad story about a gentleman who was working with a Scottish Highland bull. He ended up getting killed by his bull. And it's a good example of why you do need to be exceptionally careful whenever you're working with a bull. And it was always why I had so much reservation about working with a bull in the first place. But at the same time, Randy has been so gentle and so good feel like I've gotten very lucky with him. I don't know if I can get close enough to show you guys this, but if you look pretty much like right on his brisket, he's got a tick. Let's see if he'll let me pull it off him. There we go. Oof, would you guys look at that thing? Totally engorged. Yuck. All right, Macho Man, you ready to do this with me, kid? Actually, what I wonder is, is he going to let me strap a GoPro to him while we do this and we can maybe have bull cam? Can I stick this on you? Oh boy. I'm not sure if it's giving you guys the best perspective on the world, but. We'll give it a shot, at least for a little bit. But yes, in case anybody is wondering, that is a GoPro strapped to a bull that we have here. All right, Randy, first step is, don't, please don't bump my good camera. <laughs> All right, Randy, so the first step is, I gotta take down this fence. 
Oh, he already ditched the bull cam. So I guess this experiment's not gonna work. But now he's officially free and loose in the pasture. All right, come on, buddy. You've had plenty of fresh grass these past few days. Come on, Randy. Come on, pal. Come on, Jimmy. Whoa! Hey, Abby, come! Abby, Abby, come! Well, that wasn't good. I think Abby sort of spooked Macho Man, and now Macho Man <laughs> has gone sprinting down that way. Oh no, that was bad. I don't know if you guys can see, but he's all the way down at the end of that fence line. This is where Abby Dog's herding instinct can also create problems. But at least he's heading in the direction that I wanted to have him head, so. We'll just slowly walk down that way. Yeah, and this is another reason why it's so important to actually have a perimeter fence so that you can manage stuff like this. <laughs> Whew, that was a little spooky. He, he got like, got a little charged once he started charging. Now I see what Janet means. I've got my heifer calves on the other side of this fence right here. And so that's what he seems like he's rushing towards, which is not exactly where I want him to go. All right, Abby, I need you to hang back, okay? Come on. Oh, looks like he's heading in the right direction now. Come on, macho man. You can see all the other cows, they're up over that hill. Just gonna let him do his thing. That's Randy being Randy. Now you can see him over by last week's chicken fence. Abby, come. I know you're trying to help. I can tell you're trying to be helpful, but what you're doing might not be as helpful as you think. We're just gonna let him keep walking slowly over there. You look, he's a bucking bronco right now. Oh, now he's gotten himself trapped inside the chicken fence. He's kicking and rubbing. Easy, macho man, easy. Nice and easy, buddy. Nice and easy. Let's see if I can't lead him out of this area here. I think he's gonna figure it out. Looks like he's getting a good scratch on the boulder there. Can I brush you? There we go, that's calming. Abby, back off. Abby, Abby, come. You're causing problems. I feel like it was a mistake for me to bring you up here for this exercise. Our goal is now to move him from here up over there. Come on, Randy, come with me. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Yeah, Macho Man, these are our chickens. I don't think you've met these guys yet. Can you come over this way? I'm actually impressed. He's just kind of following along. I don't have to really herd him as much or use the halter to move him as much. He's just coming with me. Let's see if I can just lift this rope and convince him to come in. Come here, Macho. Macho Man. You don't want to go under the rope, okay? I can see you've been very well trained at this point to not want to go under the rope. Well, let me open up the rope for you then, kid. <laughs> You're almost there. You're almost at the edge. Come on, Macho Man. Macho Man, let's go. Unfortunately, I dropped his brush somewhere. Hey, macho Man, can I coax you to go in? Oh, now Macho Man's wandering back away, going to check out the chickens again. Janet was right, and I shouldn't have put that halter on. I realize that now as I watch him stepping on it. It's a mistake. Come on, Macho Man. All right, now I just knocked over the chicken water bucket. He's playing with the chicken water bucket. This is not what you should do, just for the record. I should have number one checked because I probably wouldn't have done this on the day that I just had a calf. And then number two, <laughs> I should have been more careful with Macho Man and I should have listened to Janet and I should have gone through the effort of making a corral to get him in here. <sighs> Mistakes are made. Can I get you calmed down for a little bit? Come on. Whoa, hey, nope. This is just like old times, come on. Nice and easy. I'm really mad at myself for losing that brush. Come on, Macho. Oh, there's my brush. There we go. Come on, leave the fly trap alone, man. Yep, we're just gonna do a little more brushing, a little bit more walking. This is just like we've done every other time. I've made videos on this topic before in the past. When I first started working with Macho Man, I was really intimidated and really scared just because bulls can be dangerous. And it really took some practice and some coaching before I developed the bond and relationship I have with him. And now, just using this brush, I can get him to calm down and behave and go where I need him to go. Come on, pal. Come on. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Just like we've done before. Come on, pal. We're almost there. We're almost there. I'm actually going to close off the fence first and then I'll get his halter off. Okay, so he's now back to being paddocked in, which is good. I'm pretty sure he's going to find his way quickly there once I start walking over there. This is not what I expected this was going to be this morning. The calf. I, I, I'm, I'm so focused on the task at hand of moving Macho Man. I completely haven't talked about how excited I am about this calf. We'll talk about that in a couple minutes. But let me get this Macho Man situation taken care of first. Come on, Macho Man. Let's go. There we go. It's almost your moment, kid. Hold on. I will admit that the ladies seem just as excited as he is about his arrival. So that's a good sign. Macho Man, you're free to go in now, kid. You got all the ladies ready for you. Just gotta go right through that passageway. You're digging that grass, huh? Well, that was supposed to be tomorrow's grass. 
but you know, you can sample it a little bit. Mr. Joey Ramon, how'd you end up outside the fence? Something happened last night? Can I get you in underneath it? Wanna go underneath? Come here, Joey. So Joey Ramon, as you guys might recall, he was spending most of the winter with Macho Man and I had them paired up over there, but last week he ended up going AWOL and joining the ladies. And so uh, I've struggled a little bit to keep him contained. Can I get you under the fence? Can I get you under it? Want a little brush? Joey lets me brush him. Not quite like Macho Man, but he does let me brush him. I feel like I need to get a couple fence posts that are a little bit taller than my usual fence posts so that I can make like a little tunnel for them every so often. Yeah, I almost need it to be as, like twice as tall as my regular fence posts and I could like just make a little tunnel for whenever I have a situation like this. The reality is I might have to walk them all the way down to the end of the fence. All right, I'll worry about you later. I'm not too concerned with what you're doing. Let me get Macho Man into this cell. Yeah, I feel like this is cattle farming for ADHD folks where, yes, I'm bouncing from thing to thing and there's a lot going on in this video, so I'm sorry. Come on, Macho Man. All right, Macho Man's still sort of taking his sweet time. So I just want to take a minute and interrupt this video to give you some exciting news. You know, earlier this year, I had a guy by the name of Dan Omen up at our farm, and he made this incredible documentary about Goldshaw Farm, and particularly the guardians of Goldshaw Farm. So specifically, Dan spent a lot of time with me, and he made this incredible film talking about our livestock guardian dogs, how they ended up on our farm, the story behind training them, and really where we're going in the future with the Livestock Guardian Dogs on our farm. And now this special documentary is premiering right now over on Abundance Plus. And if you're not familiar with Abundance Plus, let me just tell you, it is this incredible platform that offers a wide, wide variety of content all about homesteading. And only on Abundance Plus will you be able to get access to this brand new Goldshaw Farm documentary. I think it's really exciting. Also, as a special added bonus, there's a special master class that I have made all about the biggest mistakes I've made when it comes to training livestock guardian dogs. I'll leave a link down below in the description of this video, and if you act now, you can get a special free trial, and you will be able to see this brand new Guardians of Goldshaw Farm documentary. Click the link down below and check it out. All right, now let's get back to the show. Can I get you to come? Come on over. I wonder if I actually take this fence line down. Will he go and meet the ladies pretty quick? Uh-oh. Abby's trying to play with the calf, I think. Abby dog, leave the calf alone. It's amazing how the cattle really do seem to accept Abby as her own. And Abby, please don't eat the afterbirth. Let's see how close Amanda lets me get to her calf. Maybe I can check out gender here. Oh, those flies off you. Oh, we got a little heifer calf. So she's gonna need a B name. So the way animal naming works here on our farm, all the first cows on our farm get A names. So Audrey, Ariel, Anne of Green Gables, Annabelle, Amanda, like they all get A names. And the second generations who are born here on the farm get B names. And so we got like Bonnie McMurray and Belinda Carlisle. And so because she's now born here on the farm, she gets a B name. We just gotta come up with what that B name is gonna be. But yeah, it looks like both her and mom are doing pretty well. I haven't seen her drink any milk just yet, but it seems like, if I had to guess based on dryness, she was born somewhere overnight. She seems like, you know, mom's licked her off a lot. I've seen her licking, so she's definitely come to accept her. Let's see how territorial she gets. Yeah. She seems to let me handle her pretty well. This will dry out over the course of the day. Yeah, Abby. This is a new calf. She's very pretty. Nice red colored girl. So she will be a future breeding partner with Macho Man. She wouldn't breed with him for a couple of years now. So because she's being born right now, I probably wouldn't set Macho Man with her until, let's see, I guess June of 2025. Yeah, so give her two years. So June of 2025 would be when she'd be projected to have her first calf. Would you look at this? Oh, I think our boys figured it out. Come here, Macho Man, we're almost there. There we go. Oh, you're almost there, kid. So, so desperately close. That's the stuff. All right, let's close Macho Man. And now it's time to open it up for the girls. Hey, girls, come on, girls, fresh grass, fresh grass, come on. Now, none of my cattle are in heat right now, and Macho Man actually needs to still establish himself in the herd. And so you might see a little bit of tussling and bumping back and forth over the next 
couple of days and that's totally normal. You know, I was planning on him actually being the smallest member of the fold. You know, with our new heifer calf, obviously that's not the case, but Amanda Hug and Kiss will play defense for that calf. Randy's still going to have to very much establish himself. Like Audrey, the black cow at the end there, she is our boss cow. She's our most dominant cow. Actually, Amanda Hugginkiss, who's the new calf's mom, she's actually the low gal on the totem pole. And so they're just gonna need some time to establish kind of where he's at. They are familiar with him though, because he did spend all winter in the paddock directly next to them. So it's not like he's strange. He's just not really still part of the fold just yet. And so for Macho Man, he's gonna still be establishing himself with everybody and figuring things out. This will take some time. Now, I know there's gonna be some folks who ask in the comments, isn't he too young? You know, he is just about a year old now, and I wouldn't say he's too young, but he's just right on the edge of being able to do the job he needs to do. At this point, physiologically, he's producing the sperm he needs to produce. It's just a matter of physics, and will he be able to properly mount the girls? But they usually have a good way of figuring that one out. And so probably by the time I have my next heat with my next cows and all the cows are open, that's gonna be the opportunity for them to impregnate. There he is getting to know Annabelle. I'm amazed that Amanda's letting me get this close to her. Hi, hi, how are you girl? How are you? Well, she looks completely healthy, which is a good sign. I'm super excited about this heifer. That's great. So this is another animal that's completely genetically independent from Macho Man, and so they will be able to breed. It looks like Auntie Abby is taking a liking to her as well. So I don't know if you guys have any suggestions for names. Yeah, drop them down below. It just can't be Bonnie and it can't be Belinda. Those are off limits. I do want to see her walking around a little bit more and taking drinks from her mom. You know, some might argue that I should turn her into a bottle baby, but I don't really want to do that. You're a good little girl. I can't believe you're letting me pet you like this. I can't believe your mom's letting me pet you like this, but I will take it. Yeah, get you used to that human touch. I gotta say, this is very funny. This is not how I thought it would go. First off, Randy is much more interested in the mineral block and water, which he had his own version of down over there, but he's much more interested in that stuff than he is in the actual cows. I just had my one and only calf born for the season and she's actually just very chill and relaxed and mom is way more interested in the grass. Sometimes farming is just not what you expect it to be. Oh, look at you getting up on those wobbly legs. Oh, you're a sweetie. You were really a sweetie. Here comes mom right now. Hey, Amanda. You did some amazing work right here. I mean, you had a problem-free labor, produced a beautiful little heifer. I am very proud of you, Amanda. I know you've been escaping a lot lately, but I assume that this has something to do with it. Let's see if that calf can take a drink. As you guys can see, you know, Amanda's udder is completely full, so she's got plenty of milk going there. Oh, there she goes. She's drinking away. That's great. See if she can follow along with mom. There's her future husband. A little weird, but... We'll be okay with it. They're animals. Yeah, calves spend a lot of their time sleeping. And so she's had a long day and so she's just getting used to things. Look how nurturing Abby's being. I'm so happy to see this. Good job, Auntie Abby. Maybe you're the cow that I one day milk on a regular basis. Yeah. You seem to be letting me do my thing. Yeah, get used to that human touch. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Probably also start halter training her early. Mm -hmm much like I did with Randy. So I found that to be a completely useful resource, even though I didn't use much of it today. I like how the other cows start to investigate the newest member of the fold. So that's Auntie Ariel and Auntie Annabelle. How are you doing, buddy? You good with all the excitement? I think things have settled out here pretty well. I'm gonna leave you in charge there, Randy, and I'm gonna go check on some other things around the farm, okay? Now, Abby, you can stay up here, but Randy's in charge. Just remember that, okay? But, you know, you got this whole pasture to do your thing. Now, Joey Ramon, I gotta get you inside. You know what I'm gonna do? I'll be back with treats. Since I don't give my cattle any grain whatsoever, I don't use sweet feed or any of those things. The only thing I use as a treat to motivate them sometimes is I have alfalfa cubes, which I don't have any on me right now, but I have a whole bag of them down in the barn. Here we have Bonnie McMurray and Belinda Carlisle, and the two of them are in their little area. They're being kept separate from all the other animals because I don't want them breeding with Randy this year. They're still a little bit over a year old, and so they won't breed until, like, I don't know, June of 2024. So they're just gonna be down in this lower pasture all summer, 
separate from everybody else while everybody else is back there with Randy. Next year, I will treat that heifer calf in a very similar fashion. I probably need to add another heifer calf or two to make sure that she has some friends so she's not all alone. You can actually see right here where Molly Murder Mittens is playing. This is my project for the day. I've been working on building a new happy cow mobile. I went back to the drawing board and I made up a different design using a bunch of old steel poles that I had sitting around. They were steel poles that I bought when Alfred and I were trying to build our own greenhouse and that kind of failed. And so I just had them sort of kicking around the farmyard. So I started cutting them yesterday and I made this schematic of like what it was gonna look like and I made a cut sheet and so I've cut them all and I'm starting to assemble it today and hopefully get it built by the end of the day today. We'll see. I've got all sorts of new curveballs to deal with today, but I don't know. I'm so giddy from like all the energy of moving Randy and the calf. Uh, it's, uh, this is a good day on the farm. I have no idea why Rosie the Weird Chicken is in here in the hoop coop, but she is. But I don't know if you guys can see this, right? But uh, the hoop coop has turned into the food garden for the birds come fall and winter. And I recently made a video talking about all the stuff that I planted it with. I've been watering it on the regular and it's really starting to come alive in here and I'm super excited about it. I mean, just to give you guys the rundown, you can see some of our pumpkin plants are starting to get their flowers. So we will have plenty of pumpkins. You can also see that the buckwheat is starting to sprout. I also have some cabbage plants that were left over from our regular garden that I just threw the leftover starts in here. There's also some oats that are starting to spring up. And then there's all sorts of things happening in the chaos garden, but we'll take a look at that again real soon. But yes, I am super excited with how things are turning out in here. And uh, this is becoming very easy to manage and very easy to grow food in here. And speaking of food in here, let's feed Mr. Toby Dog. Here you go, buddy. Enjoy some of his favorite freeze-dried raw food. He loves that stuff. By the way, this is probably the perfect time to tell you guys that the pre-order for the new Toby Dog book is going to be starting in just a couple of weeks. I'm super excited about it. It's a novel written for, you know, really anybody eight years old and up. It tells the story of when Toby Dog first arrived at the farm as a puppy and he learned how to be a livestock guardian dog. Now, because it is a novel, it is technically a work of fiction. And to be truthful, some of the events pictured in the book didn't actually actually happen. But it is my sense of what Toby experienced as he was a livestock guardian dog learning his place here. There's going to be a print version, there's going to be a Kindle version, and then there's going to be an audible audiobook version. I'm super excited about each one, particularly that audiobook version. I think it's going to be something really, really special. So if you want to find out the latest news on it and exactly when the pre-orders open, as well as a few special offers that are going to be coming out, be sure to sign up for our mailing list down below. By the way, those are the best gate latches in the world. Probably by the end of this year, I switch all my farm latches to those latches. Guess who's back? Back again. I'm back. Where's your little friend, Amanda Hug and Kiss? You know, the grass is so tall right now, kind of easy to lose the calf. And I think we lost the calf right now. <laughs> so I've decided to put one of my theories to the test. I'm gonna try to build something right here on the spot as a way to get Joey Ramon back into where he needs to be. I don't know if you guys just saw that in the background, but it looks like Randy was tussling with Ariel. Like I said, sorting out the hierarchy is something that will definitely continue to happen over the next few days. Now, Amanda, where did your little one go? If I'm not careful, I could probably step on her. Oh, there she is. She's just sleeping in the grass. Oh, little Batilda. Now, I've heard other folks like cattle ranchers talk about doing something like this before. So this is not an original idea, but I've heard it called like a Uruguayan gate. Sometimes you, people use it to like give their cattle access to like water lanes or that sort of thing. See, it's just a way to like lift up the poly wire. Now let's see if I can convince Joey Ramon to go in. Can I get you under it? There we go. Whew, that worked like a charm. I'm gonna have to keep this one up here for whenever I have a situation like that. Like even when I'm moving from like one lane to the other, I often have to like set up two different reels. Now I could just use one reel to like fence them in for an entire week. It's gonna make my life so much easier. I'm glad I used that. I apologize if this entire video turns out to be just footage of my livestock guardian dog licking this calf, but I just can't get enough of that. I also can't get enough of you. Your adorableness times a billion. There's just no doubt about it. The 
more you let me handle you, the better. Are you trying to eat some grass? You are, it's okay. Oh, my two boys are back to tussling. Joey Ramon is a little bit bigger still, but not by much. They're the only two male bovines on the farm right now. I think they're battling for herd supremacy. The female hierarchy is often very different than the male hierarchy on a farm. I don't know how much of this chaos you guys are catching. Basically what I'm finding is like everybody's all charged up and they're kind of battling a little bit. And so I'm gonna make the judgment call of rather than moving them daily like I usually do, I'm gonna actually open this whole strip up so that they have more space and they're not right on top of each other. Just because I wanna avoid having to chase cattle every two minutes, as you guys can probably see way over there. I've got Anna Green Gable, she just escaped. And so I wanna avoid that type of a situation and having to deal with that problem. And so I'm gonna open up this side, which is where they were yesterday. By the way, never leave your fence stakes out like this if there's no poly wire on it or your cattle are gonna rub up against them and they will break them very quickly. Isn't that right, Joseph? All right, so now everybody sees there's extra space. Randy's gone a little bit further to the edge, so he's got a little bit more room to run. Hey, yeah, you can hear it. There's a lot of discord amongst the herd right now. Too many changes at once. I probably would have postponed integrating Randy in today if I had known that the calf was born. So that is definitely, I should have come over here and check. I mean, I knew that Amanda was on pregnancy watch. You know, I've been making short videos about it and talking about it, but I wasn't expecting the situation to be one where like it would happen this morning, the day that I got Randy in here. When I checked on her last night, she seemed fine and didn't seem like she was ready to go. I don't know, that was probably around nine-ish, 9.30 maybe at night. Um, it was just getting dark. And so, yeah, so somewhere between then and I don't know, I was up here and over here by, it was like 5.30. So, so somewhere in between that little window, that's when the calf was born. So now they'll have plenty of space to move around. I know Randy, you're not as popular as you thought you were gonna be. That basically describes my entire high school existence. So I appreciate what you're going through, pal. Being a teenager is tough. You're gonna do good. I'll try to bring Anna Green Gables back into the fold soon, but I got something else to deal with first. Now I know a lot of people are gonna say that the mom's supposed to eat the placenta and there's lots of nutrients and it's important to do that, but I have some real concerns about leaving it out here. You. So for number one, the mom generally doesn't seem to eat it. When I had like other calves born here, they just kind of sat there and it collected flies and then got maggots and got disgusting. And so that's one problem with it. Number two, I really don't want Abby eating it because there's a couple of illnesses that can be transferred to dogs. And so I gotta be careful with that. And then number three, one of my biggest predator concerns out here is coyotes. And I would hate to attract coyotes with the smell of the blood in the placenta. While I'm really not worried worried about the coyotes attacking any of my adult animals. Particularly with the new calf, I do worry. She's small, she's vulnerable, and while the rest of the herd might help to protect, and having Abby up here will also help kind of keep them a little bit further away, I don't need to do anything to like increase my risk and increase the chances that I end up bringing coyotes closer than they need to be. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take that away. And there are actually a couple of other animals who I will feed it to. Come on, in, back in, back in, come on. There we go. Another win for the Uruguayan gate. I don't know, maybe it's a Paraguayan gate. I, I gotta look that one up. Day one of brushing my Scottish Highland calf. Aw. Oh. You're gonna let me do it right out of the gate, huh, sweetie? Good girl. Well, hopefully this becomes a core memory for you. You're a sweetie, you know that? Oh my gosh, I have never had a calf be this friendly and docile right out of the gate. This is wonderful. You know, when I had my first four calves on the farm, I think I was a little bit still scared of my cattle. And the moms were rather protective and they were in their winter area. And so they didn't have the distraction of fresh grass like they do now. Now with this little one, I mean, oh, we'll be doing this daily, sweetheart. Just you wait. Auntie Abby and Auntie Audrey are coming their way. Here comes that first gross green poo. Abby, get out of there. Leave that alone. Audrey's coming to say hi. She's like, are you my mom? Nope. <laughs> She's like, nope, you can't drink off me. Meanwhile, Macho Man's also getting a little curious. We got Boss Cow with the two new additions. I don't think she wants to do much with either of them. 
Randy's not that interested in little baby calf. I think he's much more interested in Audrey. If he wants to put in the work, he's welcome to. Now is his time to shine. Well, here comes everybody else. Oh, they just realized that I just opened up a whole lot of other fresh grass. Amanda, don't neglect your little one. I do worry that Amanda might not be the most attentive mother. Like, it's nice that I get a lot of quality time with this little one, but usually I'd expect the mom to be a little bit more watchful. And so that's one thing I'm gonna have to keep the lookout on. I have seen them nurse and I've seen Amanda lick her, which are all the signs that you wanna see. So I'm not panicked or worried just yet, but it is something I'll watch for. If you guys wanna flash back to the first time we had a calf on our farm, which was Belinda Carlisle, I'll leave a link for that video right here. And yeah, we gotta figure out a bee name for this girl. Isn't that right, Bridget? 